So I put out a video yesterday showing Alexei laying down on his gravity flyer and moving around. Now a lot of people ask, why isn't he getting shocked by the high voltage? Well, I did some testing and I found out why. He has his Tesla coil connected to the gravity flyer on the center plate and frame. What's that going to do? It's going to create heat. Heat only. You're not going to get shocked by it. You're going to move your finger back maybe a little bit because you're using the heat. And I burned my finger this morning doing it. It gets about 74, 75, 76 degrees, right in that range right there. So it's producing heat in the center plate. Now, some of the other testing that I did was to verify about the high voltage. So what happens when you turn down the voltage real low on the high voltage and you turn up your Tesla coil? Well, what happens is the Tesla coil interacts with the high voltage line. So now they cross each other. So now you're putting more voltage in there and then it'll start to spark over. Alexi always says when it sparks over, you got to start over. So what do I think he really means? You're not going to put a whole lot of high voltage in this at all. That's not the whole purpose here. You're trying to create a static volt. What he's doing is he's putting barely enough voltage to turn it on on the high voltage side. Then he uses his Tesla coil to make the high voltage a much higher voltage coming out of the actual brush. What does that mean for you? That there actually is not a whole lot of voltage there except for a static volt. In doing the testing, what I did was took some paper and put it on there. I checked for the air, see if there's any air going on there. I checked for static cling. Static cling is one of the biggest indicators that you're getting a static charge buildup. And what happened? There's a static charge buildup. Now a lot, of, a lot of you out there want to use different things for static charge. Why not use a Van de Graaff? Well, Van de Graaff would overpower this, but it wouldn't work with our Tesla coil the way this is working with our Tesla coil. And again, you cannot overpower one thing in there without ruining it for all the rest. So, what happens? So, you turn up the power on your Tesla coil. Again, this is conventional running with our high voltage on the top and bottom plate and the Tesla coil to the center and frame. So, what's, what's going on? Let's get back to this again. The Tesla coil is putting in more voltage into it. So, it's making a more of a static volt out of it than even you can do with your high voltage coil. That right there is one of the biggest keys. So why can he lay on it? Because he's only going to get a little burn. What did you also notice in the video? Well, if you looked at it, you saw a shirt. It was static clinging to the center plate. So again, in the testing that I did today, I wanted to see if I could take a dryer sheet and put it on there and create a static charge on it. And as soon as I did, what you start noticing in the video when I show it later is it's going to have a lot of static cling on it. And it's going to start setting off my computer. It actually goes off just on cue. As soon as I put it on there, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo, all the time my computer keeps going off. And eventually I'm going to ruin it if I keep going. But I wanted to do it to show that it was happening. That there's a direct correct, correct connection between the amount of static and EMI that you're getting off of it versus what's going out everywhere else. So it is a really cool thing. Guys, this thing is working differently every time. I know I change the configuration a lot. Okay, please don't misunderstand me. I'm very happy with the fields I have it in one configuration. I went back to this configuration for one reason. I wanted to see it, when everybody connects it up the same way, the same way he said to do it, what is it doing? So we verified a few things. One thing I will tell you about this. It becomes more resilient the more that you take the charge out of it the first time. What do I mean? When you go up to it and you touch the gravity flyer, it'll actually pull the charge to you. So it'll remove it mostly out of the circuit. Now you must build up the charge again. So you build it up again. This time you touch it, it still pulls it towards you. Three more times and what happened? What happened was something very simple. Now I can touch it on and off and the light will come on and off. Where before the light would stay off. 
the field is coming back stronger the more time it discharges and recharges. Why that's happening, I'm not exactly sure yet. I just know that it is. I know that I'm getting charges going back and forth, and I know that every time that I do it, I'm getting more resilience out of it in the actual gravity flyer. This probably goes to why it takes Alexi three times sometimes to get this thing to lift. There's something there. So it might be just what he's looking for. He wants to discharge it a little bit and charge it again. Discharge it and charge it again. And what it's probably doing is it's probably making the actual energy flow expand. Every time he does it, it expands it where it's going. And he did a simple test uh, on another video and he was showing this. He had a piece of PVC, it was like this. He had this little grate, it was like this. What did he do that was so special on that? He simply took his high voltage and he would charge the plate on the bottom. It has all the wrinkles in it. And then he would let go. Then he did it again and did it again. And it wasn't until he did it about the sixth time that the actual piece of PVC went over there. What is that actually doing? He's putting a polarity on it. If you've ever seen the experiment where you take a piece of PVC and you take a uh, piece of cloth and you rub the cloth on the PVC and then you take a can, you can move the can. It's the same thing. You're putting a polarity on this. So that's exactly what he's doing in that experiment. How is he doing it? He's using a high voltage charge in order to put a polarity on it. So now when you look at it, you go, okay, He's going on and off, on and off. What is he doing? He's polarizing everything. He's putting a polarity charge on this thing. Now I can overwhelm it and put a polarity charge on it, but he can do it by making all these fields work together. He's polarity charging it. So the center plate itself has a heavy charge on it of a uh, static field, and it's getting heat. So if he's creating a bubble, he's creating heat, he's creating a static charge. He's creating things that are natural to the environment that we already know are going to be able to lift. Heat, if it's in a bubble, heat in a bubble lifts. That's pretty simple. Now, we also have static. What does static do? In the old time days, they used to take static and they built these uh, cool experiments where they would hold people and they'd go like this and they'd statically charge them. And what would you see? you see paper. Paper would come up and get into their hand and stick there. Why? Because they polarized their body. And all it did was create a ability for this thing to come up and touch, touch there and stay there. They statically charged it. There's something more here in that. And we'll have to dive more into it later. But what I'm trying to say here, guys, is everything can be explained if you start doing the experiments. So I won't get into people who just comment on whatever, but what I'm saying is that there's chargers here working together. There's things that are uh, coming together the right way. So maybe he did have it in the conventional way. Maybe there's more there than I thought there was. So in some of these tests that you'll see, you'll start to see that. And yeah, I did go out and touch the center disc and yeah I did touch the rotating disc and I did get shocked because I like to run everything at a higher voltage because I'm old and I just like things get exciting maybe maybe I just want to shock myself God, who knows at this point some days I think I just do it for fun but anyway look I just want you guys to understand that I'll put out the video a little later today but I think it's really cool and it explains a lot all right thank you very much all right, here we go. There's another video from Alexi on his gravity flyer. Again, lifts no problem. For those out there who question this, there are no trees, there are no poles, there's nothing out there. Let's see how he manipulates this thing. So you can see it just looks buoyant, like it's in a bubble. Look at that. Hands right over the top. There's there's no way. There's nothing holding that. I mean, he's not cutting the videotape here, guys. 
He, he is manipulating the daylights out of this thing now. All right, that's just unreal. Okay. Yeah. There's no way to get around this. I mean, definitely real. Definitely real. There's, guys, it's 100%. There's, there's, you can't do that. That's, that's just, it has to be anti-gravity. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.